I mentioned a tip a few weeks ago about how you can instantly remove the background of your pictures for free on your Mac. Well, the person that taught me that is gonna be teaching you a bunch more useful tips just like that one. He's Tyler from Ty Teaches Tech, and you're gonna to wanna to watch this one in full. Thank you for the handoff, Dylan, and welcome everybody. Great to meet you. Today, we are going to be focusing a lot on file management tricks and tips within our Mac that we can use not only for video editing, but for everyday use. The first thing we're gonna do is pull up Finder. As we see here, I have a bunch of app icons that I have been storing over time. And we are going to go up to the top at View, and then we are going to select Show Path Bar. We can also hit the keyboard shortcut for it. If I go back here, it will be Option Command P down here we have a full path now of where we are in our system and all we have to do to navigate to any one of these folders along the path is double click it so right now i'm in the app icons folder but if i want to go all the way to my say assets folder right here i can double click it and now i have all of my assets which is very convenient i'm going to jump back to where i was within the app icons folder and we're going to do one other useful view feature and that is show preview which is right here or you can hit command shift p Whenever I select any icon or folder, it will show this nice big preview of the picture at the top, which is wonderful. But we also get a bunch of useful information down here, including the dimensions or resolution of the folder, as well as a couple of quick actions. Right now we see rotate left and markup, which is pretty useful, but as an editor, I actually prefer using two other actions that are much more useful. If we go down here, we can see what those actions are. We have convert image. I'll go over that in a moment. And we have remove background, which you may have seen in a previous video of Dylan's. In order to get these two actions to show up right here and right here, what I'm going to do is click customize. And now I'm going to deselect the ones that I'm not going to use very often. So I don't really use these four, but if I leave convert image and remove background selected, hit done. I'll go ahead and close system settings. We now see that we have these two really useful tools right at our disposal. So for example, I'll go to my downloads folder. Let's go ahead and pick a random image like this one right here. I'll hit space to do a quick preview of the image. And we have this pretty cool graphic I found at a tea shop. So right now it's H-E-I-C and you might know that HEICs can be a bit stubborn to work with. So what we can do is highlight this image, hit the shortcut for showing the preview bar, which is Command Shift P, brings this right up. I'll go ahead and expand it a little bit so it's easier to look at. And we can click Convert Image down here. This will allow us to convert the format, which I'm going to choose a JPEG, and we'll be able to change the image size, which is really useful if you have, say, a thumbnail picture that is over the two megabyte limit on YouTube. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as the actual size right here, we can leave preserve metadata checked and I'll click convert. And there we go. We have the original right here, but now we have the new JPEG right here. Another awesome thing we can do is this remove background button. I'll go ahead and click this. And what it will do is generate a new image with the subject only. So it removes the background. What do you know? It just renames it remove background right here. Um, so we still have the original, of course, but we have this newly created image. And there we go. It actually does a very good job of removing the background. I'll go ahead and hit command shift. P again to remove the preview. And there's a couple of other very quick things that are useful for us. So right now I am looking at the list view in Finder. You can tell because this is highlighted. But if you think of these as different numbers, so this grid view is number one, this list view is number two, this view is number three, and this view is number four. What we're actually able to do is switch between these views by hitting command one, so that'll jump to the grid view. This is of course useful for quickly looking at images. If I wanna increase the size of them, by the way, I can hold down command plus to do that or command minus to decrease the size. And now if I hit command two, which I'm gonna do right now, it will jump to the list view and then command three for this view and command four for this view. I find this to just be a little bit faster than moving up here and clicking on these views. Also, while we're here in Finder, let's go ahead and change these pesky epidemic sound file names. I don't like having these ESs in front of my file names because it just is a little bit distracting. So what we can actually do is highlight all of the things that we want to rename. We can right click, go to rename. And from here, we'll be able to actually replace text. So if I do ES space, dash space, it will find this in every single file and then replace it with, what do I wanna replace it with? Well, let's just 
get rid of it. So nothing. I'll go ahead and click rename and it will automatically rename all of these files for me. And another quick trick here, this one's actually my personal favorite. We'll go ahead and jump to app icons because there are a lot of files in here. If I want to jump to a file very quickly, let's say I want to find the mail icon. All I have to do is start typing mail. So M-A-I and it will immediately jump to the mail icon. Another awesome thing we can do straight from our Macs is strip the audio or the video from a video file through QuickTime. Let's go ahead and use this example of a free sound effects pack that I downloaded from YouTube. I'll open it right now. And as we can see, it is both a video and an audio, but this video isn't really useful, right? I would ideally just have an MP4 of the audio. Well, what I can do is open it in QuickTime, go to edit up here and then click remove video. We also have the option to remove audio. I'll go ahead and click remove video. And now we have a new untitled version of just the audio. If I hit command S to save it, I can choose where I want to store this. I'll go ahead and put it in my sounds library right here. I'll have this be audio only. You can name it whatever you want. We'll hit save. And now we have that file in audio format only. And finally, we have tags, which have been around for a while, but once you know how to use them, become very, very useful. Let me show you an example of how I use tags. So I store a lot of sound effects and I have different folders for different types of sound effects. I'll go ahead and open the whoosh folder and here's all my whooshes. Now it's great to have a diverse library. You might use certain types of whooshes for say different clients, but for me and my brand, I like to have my own consistent assets such as sounds, graphics, and overlays that I use in my videos often. One way I could do this is to create my own folder and put whooshes and other sound effects and graphics inside of it. But then I lose the ability to organize all of my whooshes in one folder, which I definitely prefer doing because that way, if I need to find a whoosh, I know exactly where to go every single time. So what I do is tag my favorite whooshes that I use for Thai Teaches Tech with this blue tag right here. And one way we can actually add tags is through the preview menu that I showed you before. As we can see, this whoosh movement A is tagged with Thai Teaches Tech. If I want to create a new one right here, I can do that. Name it anything I want. I can add a color and the tag is automatically created. We can also see the tags we've created right here under tags on this sidebar. In order to add a tag to any file, all you have to do is select it and then you can either add the tag right here. So I can add Thai Teaches Tech to this file or I'll go ahead and hit back to undo that because another way is by just clicking and dragging over the tag in the sidebar. And now whenever I click on Thai Teaches Tech, it will show not only all of the sounds with a Thai Teaches Tech tag, but also any overlays, graphics, what have you. I also have a tag for Apple because I do a lot of Apple tutorials. It's really up to you how you create your tags. Just know that they add another dimension of organization that you can unlock. And that about does it for today's tips. Hopefully you learned something new and useful and back to you, Dylan. Definitely go subscribe to Tyler's channel. He's got tons of helpful shorts and he's also starting to jump into long form tutorials as well. Thank you guys for watching and have a great rest of your day.